In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slaying in the tech zone. Welcome back to the tech zone. Our third segment of the show. Not our last. We got one more coming up after this. Now, if you missed the first segment of the show, we gave a huge shout out to the Entertainment Software Association, the folks responsible for ESA. Please check that out. If you missed the second segment of the show, we talked about Atari Flashback and some of the games coming out in Q4, coming out in the fall. Check it out. This third segment right here, you want to check it out too, but before we uh, mosey off to the uh, Alienware booth, I would like to, what do I like to do right now? So many segments today, I'm kind of forgetting where I'm at. But no, I'm not. If you didn't get a chance to check out the accessibility and gaming panel that we did over at E3, you can go to my um, webpage, not my Facebook page, but webpage, paulamadeslane.com. It is on the front page. Some great video game icons. Join me, Sam Thompson from Sony Worldwide Studios and Bryce Johnson over at Microsoft and a couple of awesome, awesome um, disabled gamers join me as well too. So definitely go ahead and, and check that out. I became familiar with our next company that we're going to stop by uh, many, many years ago. I remember seeing the first ad and I was like, what in the world is an Alienware? And I've always kind of followed the progression when it comes to PCs, gaming PCs, because they always seem to be a cut above the rest when it comes to gaming PCs. They're probably the reason right now that a lot of other uh, manufacturers are coming up with these gaming PCs so that they can, you know, compete with these guys right here because they're really just blowing up the spot and they caught the eye of Dell several years ago. And the I tell you just the partnership has been amazing. I had an opportunity to stop by and talk to someone who was very, 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 very important. Frank Azor. Now Frank has a long title, so I'm going to read his title off the Twitter. So I don't mess up. <laughs> Frank is the co-founder of Alienware and VP general manager of Alienware <laughs> had an opportunity to, to talk to Frank and find out what Alienware really wanted to bring awareness to or, or to, to tell the, the gaming community out there about what they're doing now and, and how it's just, just really, I think it's transforming esports. So Frank, talk about the E3 experience and just being here and showcasing some of the new products here at Alienware. Oh, we love it. I mean, this is probably our 15th E3 or so. I mean, what more could you ask for? You're surrounded by awesome people, great technology, great games. I mean, I'm a gamer myself. I've been doing this for about 20 years now. I mean, I couldn't think of a better place to be. This is just all fun and games, right? So, I mean, we love it. We love coming here. We love showing off our latest technology. We love interacting with folks, learning what they love about it, where we can improve, um, seeing the jaws drop and the eyes wide open when they we show off the latest things that we're launching and introducing. People just love you know what everything Alienware is doing so it's it's a great environment we really enjoy it and Frank talk about where we're at today where PC gaming is taken to a new level now with all the technology all the fast processors did you ever see when you started gaming that you would see PC gaming just take off the way it is oh no I wish I could say this was all part of our master plan but it certainly was not I mean, this is bit way beyond expectations. I mean, when we started Alienware, we just wanted to make enough money so we wouldn't have to work for anybody else. And the gaming industry was a tiny, tiny niche. We'd tell people that we were building gaming computers. We, they thought we were building casino machines, slot machines. Um, they had no idea what we were talking about. Now, you've got games where, you know, being played by tens of millions of people. You have celebrities playing video games in the industry. You've got esports teams. You've got so much technology all over the place. All the major tech companies are investing massively in building great gaming technology. You got products in all shapes and colors and form factors and price points. Um, I mean, it's just insane. I mean, billion dollar companies are forming around gaming 
and it's just unbelievable. It's really like surreal, all the success that the industry is having. And there's really no better time to be a gamer, honestly, because you just have so many options out there around different games you can play, different genres you can play, different price points you can pay to get into gaming. You want to play on a notebook, you can. On your smartphone, you can. On a tablet, you can. On your TV, you can. On a console, on a PC. It's like games are everywhere and it's so easily accessible. It wasn't always the case. 20 years ago. It was hard to be a gamer 20 years ago. At a PC gamer, it was, you had to have like an IT certification or a degree to be able to figure out how to get games to run on your PC. We made a business out of that, fortunately, by building turnkey gaming solutions for folks so that they wouldn't have to worry about all of that. But it's honestly a much better time now to be a gamer because it's easy, there's so much less friction and it's much more accessible. So it's a dream come true. And Frank, I remember when you guys started out and to see where you guys are at today, man, this is like surreal, man. Oh, I mean, yeah. you guys are you guys are like cornering the market when it comes to gaming PCs. And do you ever take a step back and be like, "Wow, this ride was crazy, but look where we're at now"? Uh, you know, sometimes I do take a step back, and then it, it's definitely amazing. It is, uh, like I said, it, this is beyond our expectations. Um, you know, sometimes I come into this booth like every year and I, I look at what we've accomplished and I see that big Alienware sign above our booth and I, and I think about the first E3 that we came to where, I mean, we were irrelevant here. We couldn't even, we didn't even have a booth. I mean, we just came as attendees to have meetings and to learn and to take it all in. And, and now, you know, we have a huge presence and we have a ton of products and I've got like 40 people here and there's people walking around with Alienware bags and shirts and backpacks and people come up to us and they're like, I bought my first Alienware 10 years ago or thanks to Alienware, I got back into PC gaming. And it, yeah, it's, it's just, it's hard to believe sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's pretty surreal. I want to give you some props too because my um, production laptop that I take with me to do video editing is an Alienware. Awesome. So I want to give you major props thank when it comes to much. that. And thank you for the support. Oh yeah, absolutely. So talk about the products that you're showcasing here at E3 that the fans can check out and are just uh, going Google over. So um, obviously Alienware is really well known for our desktops and our laptops. Last year at E3 we introduced our keyboards and our mice. And this year what we're doing is we're kind of rounding out the rest of that portfolio. We're introducing a new headset. It's a wireless Alienware headset. We built it so that it'd be really comfortable, so you can game on it for six, eight, 10 hours if you wanted to. It's wireless, so it's got battery life up to 15 hours. So I hope you're not gaming that long, but if you are, we got you covered. Um, you can use it while it's plugged in or while it's wireless. Um, it's got all our Alien FX lighting in it, so you can customize it and interact. It'll interact with about 200 games out there that interact with our lighting API. And uh, it's just really well balanced in that it's comfortable and it sounds really, really good. Um, and that was a t the, the main priorities we wanted to go through with the headset. I mean, there's other companies out there that they put these massive drivers on their on their headphones and headsets, and you know they look big and gaudy, and they have this ridiculous bass and stuff. And that's attractive to some people. I can understand that, but they tend to be heavy. They tend to be sweaty. Uh, they tend to have really poor battery life. We could have built something like that, but we wanted to go for something that was more practical for what we think our customer, what we know our customers want, which is something that's just going to be comfortable, it's going to sound really, really good, um, and it's going to be practical to use every day, and that they're going to use for years and years to come. We didn't want them to have to buy a headset every six months or every 10 months or something like that because it gets uncomfortable and they're not happy with it. We wanted this to last for a really, really long time, so that's what we built. We also introduced a new version of our mouse, so this is a little bit smaller, a little bit more comfortable for folks that have smaller hands, so you'll be able to get that. But I think the more exciting news for us at the show is less about our products and more about our mobile app. We launched the Alienware Arena mobile app, which is really, really cool. I've been getting pings all day on my phone about quests and contests and giveaways and stuff that we're doing on the mobile app. It's really cool because you go through a couple different quests and you can get a bunch of uh, uh, beta keys for different games that haven't even launched yet. It's all free. There's no revenue model behind this for us. It's an extension of Alienware Arena. So if you're an Arena member, if you're not, check that out, alienwarearena.com, and check out the app. I think you're going to really enjoy it. And then um, our Alienware Academy program. So a lot of folks are working with esports teams. We've been working with esports teams for over a decade. But what we really wanted to do this year is do something with our esports teams that are going to help the athletes become better and then aspiring esports athletes get more involved and become better as well. So more than just putting a logo on a jersey, which has been played out for the last decade, what we wanted to do is exactly that. Add value to the athlete and add value to the aspiring athlete. So for Team Liquid, for example, we built them a training facility and we opened it up in March. 
It's phenomenal. 8,000 square foot training facility. You walk in there, and it's it's like unbelievable. I mean, the facility that these guys have to train in now, there's nothing else like it around the world. They have a kitchen, they have a nutritionist on staff, they're fixing meals for these guys so that they can perform just top notch. And I mean, since then, if you look at Liquid, they've got an incredible record of winning. But since we put the facility in place, their record's improved. So I just want to say, you know, I want to take a little bit of credit for that. <laughs> but that's what we did for the athlete to kind of elevate their game. Then you got the aspiring esports athlete. How do we help them elevate their game? That's where Alienware Academy comes in. We took the partnership with Team Liquid and with Toby and the eye tracking technology that we integrate into our notebooks, and we created a curriculum. We're creating it actually. It's a closed beta right now. We'll open it up in a few months here, where Team Liquid's going to help you become a better gamer. We're going to use tips and, and tactics and strategies that they use every single day in practice and in competition, and they're going to pass that on to the aspiring esports athlete. And then we're going to be able to use tools like our Toby eye tracking to be able to tell you in a quantitative way, in a way that you can measure, hey, your reaction times are or are not fast enough. And here's how they compare to some of the best gamers on Team Liquid. So now you can see, hey, okay, I'm implementing the strategies, I'm doing all the things that these pro esports guys are doing, but maybe... I need to get better physically at responding and reacting to the, the targets and to the aiming and to the game and to the actions that are going on within it. And we never had that layer of understanding and measurement before. And that's what the Toby partnership is kind of bringing into the table is we're quantifying for you the reaction times and then we're measuring and calibrating that against professionals so you can know where you stand and then work on improving that. Wow. Yeah, I'm, like, cool I'm like blown away by that. <laughs> I mean, uh, a nutritionist, an academy, the record's getting better, they're improving. What else you guys got up your sleeve? Uh, we got and that app stuff. too, the app is like amazing. We got a lot of stuff. I mean, look, we've been doing this for 21 years now with Alienware. Um, I don't think anybody's been doing it longer, building gaming computers by gamers, for gamers, specially designed just for gaming. It's been our focus. We love it. It's our passion point. I mean, you, you talk to anybody on my team and they're either gamers themselves or they've been with me for 10, 15 years because we just love what we're doing, you know? Um, so for us, this is not really work. This is just, we're having fun and it happens to be, uh, you know, something that we, we get to work with our friends and, we, and something we get to do for ourselves. We build badass toys for ourselves. I mean, it's pretty awesome. So you can expect to, us to continue to remain committed to this industry, to the gamer, and continue to innovate as much as we possibly can. Uh, you know, Dell recognized what we were doing in 2006. It probably would have been a lot easier to shut us down, but instead they've invested in Alienware, they've expanded the Alienware products. We, our products are available in more countries today than they were when they acquired us. Um, they've invested in growing our team. We've created a value product line for gamers with the Dell G series. We didn't dilute the Alienware brand or the Alienware brand tenants or the promise or the quality or the performance of the product to go into lower price points. So we started a whole different product line, which is expensive and complicated to go do so that we can preserve Alienware and even move it further up. So when you look at what we're doing and how long we've been doing it and how committed we are, I mean, I think there's no question that, you know, we're here, we're here to win and we're here to stay. And you know what, I want to tell the content creators out there too, if you are streaming video, if you are a content creator, get you an Alienware too. This technology is like on fire, that's all I got to say. Yeah, we got, it's interesting, you know, we built our systems for gaming and that's our number one focus, but we have VJs coming to us and they want to use our machines for visuals because they've never been able to take this level of performance with them on the road and they're like, we're doing things real time on stage in performances that we would never have otherwise been able to do and it allows them to error correct, it allows them to be more creative and innovative on demand because the opportunities present themselves and they have the equipment now to be able to respond instantly instead of having to kind of you know, pre-cache and pre-render everything as they've always had to do before. The other thing is our cooling systems are so superior to anything else out there on the market. Now that festivals are moving outdoors, people are starting to realize, oh crap, like these computers that I have are, are not capable of, com of processing all of this compute in 90 degrees, 100 degrees, like Coachella festivals and things. So, I mean, I've seen laptops with ice buckets underneath them for people trying to cool them off. They plug in an Alienware and they're like, not only am I getting like two and three times the rendering performance, but this thing's running cool and quiet the entire time. It's like unbelievable. We're like, yeah, that's what we do, guys. I mean, that's, we've been doing it for a long time. So it's interesting to see how these products that were designed for kind of this one use case of gaming 
are, see, are getting a lot more value out of other industries that we didn't even originally design for, but they're seeing a lot of demand, a lot of demand for products like these. And isn't that a nice uh, problem to have? Uh, you know, look, I'm a fan of music. I think most people are. And whenever I see an Alienware up on stage, I got to tell you, it's a, it's a proud moment. Well, Frank, great talking to you, man. I wish you the best. And you're always a highlight here at E3. The booth is always crowded. Uh, a lot of fans want to come and check out. Congratulations on all the success, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us some time today and coming and joining us. We really appreciate it. Once again, a huge shout out to Frank Azor from Alienware. Had a once again, a huge shout out to Frank Azor from Alienware. Enjoyed our chat, talking about what they're doing, really transforming esports team sponsorship. I mean, they have a nutritionist, guys. I think I asked Frank, can I just go to get in shape? I mean, look at me. <laughs> I got my E3 spread. There's all those cocktail parties and executive parties that I was at. So, yeah. So, Frank, can you hook a brother up? I need to lose a little weight. No, but I appreciate what they're doing. Uh, and also Chris, Chris Supton. I um, interviewed him last year. And so we were talking about the, the system last year, the Area 51. So really enjoy the folks over at Alien. We're always, always willing to come on and chat about what they're doing. And, and definitely, definitely check them out. Check their systems out. And a shout out to uh, Frank and I talked about to the content creators too. If you really want to want to hum out there with your, with your video audio gets you an alien where I'm telling you it's, it's, it's the business one of my um, laptops that I take with me when I'm on the road when I have to do production it's an alien where yes it is all right coming up our fourth and final segment of the show we're going to talk about VR we're going to talk about just an arena style experience with VR if you don't know what in the world I'm talking about just stay tuned after the break I'm sure we'll find out. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul, I'm a dead slain in the tech zone. 